our mutual friend Elon Musk who said on Master Your mutual Wolf. friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he says, Master, do you have enough money? I will, I will tell you, we will make it happen. <laughs> We, we, are, we are not the bank, but we are soft bank. We are confident that we can do yeah, it. Yeah, we're confident we can do it. Cool. <laughs> Look! Sam is not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to When I met you when you were younger, you were the president of Y Combinator, and you start talking about this yeah. you know, AI and become, you know, like a human, like AGI as a goal. And uh, the, at that moment, I immediately said, I believe you, right? You, I remember. You, Your office in Tokyo. Yeah. 2017. 2017, you said that you want to go for AGI, yeah. you, you know, this 27. And I immediately said, I believe you, I want to invest, right? I remember. So I was... Uh, and here we are. Yeah, yeah. From day one, I was a believer. I, I never doubted. You know, I remember. Most people at that time thought you were crazy, right? That is true. And Some people think you're crazy too. It all works out. We, here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should have. I should have forced you to accept my investment. Well, now we did it. <laughs> yeah, now we did. It. Never too late. Never, never too late. What was the reason you started open? What was the initial trigger. How did it happen? Just tell me your history. I studied AI in college. Uh, it was clear that it wasn't working at all. I dropped out, started a tech company. Always sort of someday hoped I would get to work on AI. Even as a little kid, I was obsessed with AI. Um, I was a big sci-fi nerd. And, and then in 2012, Alex and that happened. And I said, hmm, Maybe what they told me in college about neural networks not working is not true, and maybe they're going to work. Watched for a couple of years as it scaled, and by 2014, I was like, okay, this, is, this looks like it's going to work. So thought for a while about to do. We started OpenAI at the very end of 2015 um, because we thought that AGI was possible, maybe. And if it happened, it would be like this crazy important thing. And at the time, people thought we were totally crazy. It's only 10 years ago. So, but it's hard to overstate how like out of, not even out of the mainstream, that we were like fringe, fringe, fringe for believing this was possible. But we decided we would start pushing on it. And uh, it has been the most exciting, fun, cool adventure uh, I can imagine. In, in 2018 and 19, we had GPT-1 and 2 and, you know, people looked at them and it didn't feel that serious. Uh, GPT-3 came out. I think that was the first time some people noticed. But GPT-3 barely worked. And if you go back and play with it now, it's like using, you know, I went to one of these old computer museums recently. I got to use a Xerox Alto. I think it was 50 years old. And, you know, you could like see kind of how it did some stuff and there were the inklings of a modern computer in there. But it was 50 years ago and it, it now feels like a 50-year-old computer. GPT-3 is only a few years old, and it feels, yeah, ancient. if you use it now, it feels like this joke. Uh, ChatGPT is only about two years old. came out uh, the very end of November of 2022. GPT-4 didn't come out until March of 2023, I think. Uh, and if, so if you just look at the progress here, what, how quickly the model's gotten better, and also how quickly the... Models have gotten cheaper. Yes. It really points, if we can stay on that curve, it really points to an incredible future. AI will make things way more efficient, and that's great. The economy benefits from that. The, the thing that I'm most excited for personally is these systems can help us create new knowledge that we couldn't handle on our own, we couldn't do on our own. If the rate of scientific progress can materially increase so we make a decade's worth of scientific discoveries in one year. And the next year we make a century's worth of scientific discoveries. That will have such an impact on quality of life, on the economy. And that's not just like making something cheaper. That's something we just couldn't do before at all. Yeah. We just are not smart enough without this new tool. What about the medica? How, what's your view on our AGI for solving medica? This is one of the areas that I am most excited about. 
the idea that we can provide great health care to every person on earth, the idea that we can go cure or treat many diseases, maybe someday all diseases, um, I think this is within reach. And, you know, everybody's got a story about how this will, this would have been great in their own lives or their families' lives. And I think we can finally deliver it. I think this will be one of the biggest triumphs of AI. What about education? Uh, in the beginning of uh, your introduction of ChatGPT, many schools try to prohibit the use, use of ChatGPT to their kids at the school. And uh, uh, what, what did you think? What did you, was your you know, comments? Well, I understand why people looked at this and say the whole world has changed and, you know, students can have ChatGPT write a paper for them and what does that mean? But very quickly, teachers and administrators who had banned ChatGPT said, wait, that was a big mistake. We're going to go the other direction. We're going to go all in. This is the future. Students need to learn how to use it. We're going to change our whole curriculum. And now it's like part of education. Yes. And it's delivering amazing results. And I'm sure that will keep going. Uh, you announced five level of uh, AGI uh, improvements. Now I think the third one was the agent. So explain a little bit more about how the agent works. So there, there will be generic agents that consumers use. Uh, and those can do powerful things. Like we just looked at deep research browsing the web. But... What you might want for your companies, or I think what everyone will want, is an agent that can act with as much context and information and power as an employee at the company would have. And so you need to connect it to all the systems. You need to give it all the knowledge base. It needs access to the code. It needs to understand how the company works. And that will take a lot of customization work for each company. But think about what can happen once you have it. So someone builds this and integrates it into, you know, let's say into SoftBank. And let's say there's SoftBank and then there's some imaginary competitor that hasn't done this. SoftBank can now do so much more. Yeah. And so once you've integrated AI into the workforce um, and you have all the power of that, and it's not just the deep research browsing the web or a coding agent doing writing generic code, but fully integrated into the company, that's going to be very powerful. So this is a year for the agent. And, uh, uh, but next one you say is innovator, right? Yep. So explain a little bit more about innovator. How does it work? So today our AI systems, uh, they're very good at synthesizing existing knowledge and they're very good at doing things that are similar to things that have been done before. Um, but they're not making new scientific discoveries yet. And that's, that's our next level. That's innovators. Um, and I think that'll be transformational to society. So we're going to go we get a lot of work left to do with agents this year, but next we're going to go work on that hard. So then the, the fifth level you say is the organizational. So agent to agent co-work, right? That's Yeah, that was, uh, Renee and I were talking a little about that earlier, but the idea of many agents or many innovators working together um, if you think about the number of, you know, minds that can run in one data center, all talking to each other, building off of each other's ideas, bringing different expertise together, um, you can easily imagine like a virtual company running. Yes. Yes. And then things can be quite powerful.